Joining me now is Sky News contributor Kosha Gator. Kosha, let's start with the Australian government threatening to fine X, formerly Twitter, around $800,000 if they fail to take down a critical post from Canadian man Chris Elston about a UN trans expert. Chris Elston, also known as Billboard Chris, we've interviewed him on this show, revealed on Tuesday that he had been sent a notice of removal from the office of the eSafety Commissioner. The alleged offence here was sharing information about a Teddy Cook, a transgender man, so a natural-born female who identifies as a man, who works for the World Health Organisation, helping to create healthcare guidelines for transgender and non-binary people. Kosha, this is a sinister level of censorship here. It has become a story online. Daily Mail have picked this up and it's getting a lot of attention on X and elsewhere. And what level of censorship do we have in this country where information, even critical information, can't be shared on a public platform about someone who's in a position of influence? Absolutely. This is hitting international headlines because it's uh, ground zero of what we call this battle of the century. I think we framed it that way before because this really is free speech. The battle of free speech is the battle of the century. This comes under the auspices of um, the Online Safety Act that was passed in 2021, which granted expanded powers for the government of Australia to police speech online. Uh, I believe 2021 means it was passed under the Morrison government, and I mentioned that just to show that the attack on free speech is actually coming from both sides. Absolutely. It starts always on the guise of you know, child pornography, sex trafficking, things that we can all agree with. That's the basis of the law. And then it's a slippery slope quickly to other issues like this one that's very contentious. Um, it also doesn't make sense because digital platforms are inherently borderless. Mm -hmm. And then you have the situation where under Australian law, there might be a fine slapped on to police content. In US law, there's Section 230, mm -hmm. leaving aside that it's not being enforced, which says those platforms cannot police speech if they want to enjoy their immunity liability. So how is that going to work when different countries' frameworks collide with each other? Um, the whole thing is a mess. But day by day, I think free speech is under erosion, and we've got to defend it. Now to a story that I think we're going to be hearing about for many weeks to come. Bombshell AFL allegations are brought forward by a former Melbourne football uh, club doctor turned whistleblower who has admitted to conducting off-the-books illicit drug tests to help players evade detection on match days. If they test positive on match days, it is out of the AFL's hands, Kosher. Why do step in, the World Anti-Doping Authority, and there are real consequences, including bans for up to two years. The doctor alleges here that these tests were authorised by the AFL, and today footy greats have been uh, speaking out, saying they have been absolutely appalled by these revelations, published by the Herald Sun's Mick Warner. Let's hear from Mick Malthouse earlier today. This is almost on the same level as the Essendon saga. In fact, it might even go beyond that, because this is, this is suggesting that AFL officials mm. are involved in this. Now, it is just so damning, and so... It's going to place every player, every club official, and in particular club doctors now under scrutiny. The ramifications from this are going to be very broad. To hear this, these allegations, it is, mm. it is, it, it makes you. I, I can't describe how angry I am. Hawthorne Premiership player Campbell Brown has called it the biggest controversy since the Essendon drug saga, and a number of politicians have also weighed in, including. Home Affairs Minister Claire O'Neill, who wants answers. These people are such important leaders for our community and for young people. We do want them to do the right thing, so it'll be important to get to the bottom of this. Kosha, the AFL are experts at brand management, some would say cover-ups. Uh, will they be able to bury this one? This looks big. It does look big, and just the fact everybody's weighing in from the political sphere to other icons of the sport... Um, I don't know. It's hard to see how they bury this. I think uh, some sort of investigation is going to have to happen. We'll see. You know, there, I don't know what shape that would take. Uh, the credibility of the whistleblower, I'm sure, is going to really be stress-tested uh, as they do that. But in the end, if, if true, it seem, the scale of it seems so big that things are going to fall out of the cracks, and I think it'll be very hard for them to cover it up. Uh, what they need is a couple of players 
perhaps retired players to come forward and, mm. and say uh, if they experience this. Now let's go to Alice, Alice Springs where the uh, crime crisis is only getting worse. Uh, Leo Mendes reports in The Australian, a violent riot through the streets of Alice Springs on Tuesday escalated calls for a total federal government takeover of the town. The mayor there is asking the territory's government to temporarily step aside so that order can be restored to the lawless town. Parts of Alice Springs were placed into lockdown about 3pm on Tuesday after a mob of... Uh, Angry people attacked local businesses and cars. Uh, sources on the ground claimed that it was payback for the death of a young man who died when a stolen car overturned last month. Uh, let's have a look at some of that carnage. Mate, they take a 20 metre jump to jump in the glass trying to smash it. Oh, she's got a brick. Oh, fuck It's escalated big time. They've smashed, they've smashed through one door already. There he goes, Nick. It's just shocking scenes and uh, we've got videos we can't show you of some really sickening violence too that's taken place. Um, what do we do about this? Is, is the suggestion that the federal government take over and try to restore order, is, is that a at least a short-term answer? Uh, I think it would work because you're bringing the, the firepower of a more powerful mm -hmm. law enforcement agency to do that. Uh, it would anger and a, a lot of people. I think there would be politicization that comes up about with that, that you know, when, are, when, when are the feds interfering with the states? And I get the sense that for all of these things, there's this racial political undertone that has tied the hands of law enforcement, whether it's this issue, whether it's BLM back in the U.S., everything else, that there seems to be um, a little bit of a hesitation or difficulty in really applying the force that's necessary to curtail crime in these areas. And I think there's some other political undercurrent maybe that's also at play in here for why we're not doing anything about it, because it shouldn't technically be that difficult to rein in crime in these cities, um, you know, if we really wanted to. Well, we, we spent so long last year, so much money, so much attention on a referendum, but really consequential uh, changes that can change people's lives today, that's just not happening. The focus mm -hmm. isn't on that. And I wonder how many people in Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane have any clue of, of that happening. Uh, every now and then it will get into the headlines, uh, it will be covered, but uh, when you speak to people who live in Alice Springs and other areas, this, this just seems to be an ongoing issue. Um, just very quickly, uh, more on the detainees debacle. Australia is considering stricter immigration policies. This could include limitations for asylum seekers who may be unable to return home if their country of origin refuses to accept them. Additionally, tourist visas from those countries are at risk of being restricted. Kosha, this sounds, I don't know, a bit like Trump's Muslim ban. I wonder if that's how it will be characterised in the media. <laughs> uh, it does, and I think it will always be characterised by that. By some corners, depends on who the messenger is. Um, you know, we said free speech is the battle of the century. The other great battle of our time is immigration. It's reaching a fever pitch in Western liberal democracies everywhere, at different scales of where they are on that spectrum. Asylum and getting refugee status is not an entitlement. It's a great privilege. And if the system is being abused or people are skirting around the law after they get here, every country should and does have its sovereign right to defend that. And if it takes the shape of something that's more of a blunt instrument, like a, a broad-based travel ban, you know, Labor maybe we're do at that, that stage. I will be shocked. <laughs> For a Labor government to do that, well, I, I, I remain open-minded. Kosha <laughs> thank you so much for your time tonight.